Hey, everybody. This is episode 294 of the Culture Trail Running Podcast. From the belly of the Beast Coast, Glastonbury, Connecticut, this is the Culture Trail Running Podcast. We talk about all the fun shit that happens on the trails that most normal people don't care about. The language we use is fucking explicit and raw like the trails we run on. So don't listen with your kids. Kids of culture is brought to you by our Patreons and supporters. And we are 112% listener supported and support is good. All right. All right. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Culture Trail Running Podcast. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm choking to death. I'm your host, Art Byram, and I am joined today by... Two members of the Culture Crew. We got Fred Marolo. I'm here. That's good, Fred. You look fucking thrilled. <laughs> I'm, I'm having like... a great time already. You do, right? You're gonna. You know what? You're just thinking it's a little bit closer to getting over with. So I'm feeling <laughs> better. I'm just and kidding. Every morning, Art. I'm an optimist. Every morning, I wake up and say, "Ah, another day closer to death." That's right. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Awesome. So <clears throat> speaking to um, speaking about death on the trails, we also have Celeste Fogging Tom. <laughs> we think I could be dead. I'm not sure right now. Oh my gosh. But no, you're talking, so that's something. I would be the type though to like come back just to torture people. Yeah. So you're always good for wait a minute. You're always good for a comeback. Is that <laughs> is that like appropriate or can I get enough for that? All I can think about is that um, office. Was it? No, it wasn't the office. It was Parks and Rec. Did you okay. ever see that video? I don't know if I did. They, I mean, everybody I've loves seen... a comeback. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. I it's know. Very but inappropriate. Let me find out about that later. So, <clears throat> but we have a special guest today, right off of the Cut 112. We have Jack I. Smith joining us tonight. So, welcome, Jack. So glad to have you here. So um, both Celeste and Jackie uh, ran the Cut 112. Oh. And I thought before um, we got into uh, into kind of talking about the, epi- uh, the um, you know, the, the whole event and everything, if it was an event, which it wasn't, um, that we could, uh, I'd kind of give just a rundown for people who might not be familiar with the Cut 112 if, I don't know, oh. like... Like you know. anybody might not be at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then I'll explain what the West Western States is too. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> How about the ex- uh, Erie Canal Trail? Like, wow. we talk about oh, that? I've never heard of that one. It's oh. fun. That, funny that you mentioned the Erie Canal Trail because <laughs> we're actually not going to talk about that tonight. This is a miracle. <laughs> um, so the Cut One Twelve is a. Uh, it's the Connecticut Ultra Traverse. It is a uh, approximately one hundred and twelve <laughs> uh, mile. Uh, mostly trail run from uh, Rising Corners, which is the border of Connecticut and Massachusetts. It's kind of like where if you look at Connecticut, the top, the northernmost border, there's a little notch up there. And this trail starts just to the right of that notch, because starting and hitting the notch would have cut off some distance. And why do that? Right. We'll leave that for the Farmington Canal people. So. um, So and it it um, it goes all the way down to um, Guilford, which is in the Long Island Sound. Um, and we've had this uh, event started out as a just a uh, two of us running it in 2017. Um, actually, Jackie was part of that uh, first event, too. So every year, Jackie's kind of provided um, some support or participated in, in some way there. So, um, you know, she's always been a, a good part of this. Um, and each year it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's gotten a little bit bigger and a little bit, um, I don't know, I think this year was probably the most fun, I have to say. It, it was just for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. Um, and this year we also had a, um, a race that's called, that's affectionately called the butt or the cut 50K, which is just the back end of the ultra traverse. So um so it was it was a it was a lot of fun. We had um between the two races we had uh, thirty six uh, par- thirty six participants um, for the cut one twelve. We had twenty three that initially signed up, um, and then the um, for the cut one twelve, uh, one of our participants, uh, everybody knows, but up up up, 
uh, Ross Bielak, um, he did what's called the reverse cut. So his intent initially was to uh, start out at Guilford and run up to Rising Corners and then um, make it in time there for the start and then join us and head back. Um, it kind of worked out for him, but kind of didn't. And this was his second, um, second shot at this. Last year, he did it and ran into um, some just some strange fungus problems, <laughs> I guess, or infection problems and things like that. So um, that he probably picked up in the Long Island Sound. Um, but uh, this year he he did really well and he got up, uh, you know, he, he finished um, pretty much right on schedule, um, you know, and but decided that uh, he wasn't going to run, you know, back down with the rest of the group. So, um, which... You know what? That's I. I don't blame you. I think once is more than enough um, for for anybody. So, um, <clears throat> then we also had uh, two other uh, people who did something other than the straight up um, race or the straight up run. Um, one was Tyler Tullock, and one uh, was Mark um, Mark Kelly, um, Machine Gun Kelly, MGK. So. Um, what they did was they were going for the FKT on the entire New England trail. So they got basically a 103 mile or so uh, warm up um, and timed it so that they joined us right at the starting line in time for the event, which is that's been attempted um, more than once by people. And uh, this is the first time anybody ever made it to the starting line. And then, um, and then actually, you know, ran the race and, and you know, we can kind of get into how that happened, you know, what, how that went for them. Um, so total, there were uh, 23 that signed up for the cut. Um, we had uh, one other person who had to D, uh, couldn't start on time. So we had 21 people um, at the actually running cut 112. Um, and I guess that, um, Overall, the weather was probably the, you know, probably the best that we've had so far, I would say, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I mean, it was easy for me as a, um, as a spectator or volunteer there. Um, but, um, you know, I think that we've certainly had hotter days. Um, so at first I thought, oh, my God, this race is going to lose all credibility because everybody's just going to finish. Um <laughs> And I, I told my wife, I said, I might as well just fucking drive him to drive him to the finish line, you know, um, but it, it is um, the cut is never easy under any circumstances um, for most people. Um, and, uh, you know, over the course of the day, um, you know, lots of lots of good things happen. So and I think we're going to we're going to get into that. Um, so, but let me do this because I want to talk to you guys about the human story as far as what it was like to be there. But let me just give a couple of the other stats. Um, so overall, we had um, <clears throat> 21 start, uh, 10 finishers and 11 DNFs, um, which is higher, a little bit higher than usual, but um, not the highest that we've ever had as far as a percentage basis. Um, we had uh, different we had like polar opposites on the course in some respects. Um, we had uh, Justin Kowski um, set a new course record in uh, 21, 53, 34. Okay. That's the old insane. record. Yeah. Right. I mean, just, uh, just in, I, I can't even say, you know, I, I had always wondered like how fast somebody could run it. And I still think that maybe like a Jim Walmsley or something like that could go maybe under 20, I guess was the number that a couple people have thrown around. Um, but this was, this was pretty impressive, you know, um, or excuse me, it was, it was very impressive. You know, it, I had a, um, a chart for pacing and predicting times and uh, he was off chart the whole time. I just had to kind of, for the most part, he was about 45 minutes at least of the fastest predicted time that I put on the chart. Um, and, um, you know, he, he just went. So um, we also had um, David Baker. So he ran, uh, he was the first one to ever complete it three times. Um, and then, um, but it, it only lasted for a little bit because um, a couple hours later, 
uh, Mark Kelly uh, finished and that made it his third time as well. So um, Mark just did uh, just an incredible job finishing um, in 44, 44, I think is the time I have to just double check his time, but it was like, he, he finished it with like 15 minutes to spare from the cutoff and um, after a hundred mile warm up. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, it, it was just incredible. You know what he did his whole crew there. Um, it was just uh, quite the sight to see, you know, and, and family and, and everything there. So uh, very, so much emotion this weekend, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, but tonight, I think maybe we'll start with Jackie. So Jackie, I would say that of all the people that were running there, you were hands down the absolute um, crowd fan favorite. So um, there were, <laughs> you know, um, so maybe you could kind of tell us about um, maybe your training for this a little bit or, or you know, whatever you want to talk about. Well, first of all, I'm really surprised to hear that, but I, uh, thank you. I, I love the love. Um, we had, I started probably about a year and a half ago, um, decided that I wanted to make some changes just in my life in general and joined Weight Watchers and started running. And in the course of 23, um, got back into running 50 Ks because I didn't do anything during like 2020 or 2021. I really didn't do much of anything as far as running goes. Um, so I wanted to get back into the swing. Um, May of 23, I did 250 Ks. And then um, when Vermont got canceled, um, I had gotten into the lottery for the 100 K up in Vermont. So I did a virtual one <laughs> mm, and had people come out and run it with us. And, um, and then I ended up going to hamster wheel in November mm -hmm. and just trying to keep pushing the envelope for myself. Um, but it was decided, I think within just a couple of hours of leaving hamster wheel that we would give it a crack, give, give the cut a crack, we'd give it a try. And so I put together a training plan. I had a crew assemble very, very quickly. And I had an incredible group of people around me during the whole training block mm. and, and at the cut itself. And we started it probably <laughs> December of reconning the whole section. And then as a team, we did, let's see, we did a, we did a bunch of runs together as a team. We had team meetings together. Um, I cannot say enough good things about the people who helped me toe the line um, and helped me get to Route 68. So, um, so we worked really hard, tried to be strategic about hill training and getting on the course for as many long runs as possible. Mm. And, um, my treadmill runs were cranking into 15% for, you know, at first it was a mile, but then it was two and then dropping it down, leveling it off. And then the, throwing a cinder block in the tail end of it to mimic the downhill and just kind of alternating back and forth. Um, but we ran from one day, we ran from cube line to castle craig we did a 50k from route 68 to the end we did a night run from bluffhead to the end we did a night run from andrews street just going into ragged mountain down on the other side of castle craig we tried to be strategic about everything that we did we were just intentional for six months so hmm. uh, so it was a really 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 hard decision to call it at route 68 it was um a very heartbreaking decision and I'm still feeling very guilty about it and feeling very uh, like I let my team down. Um, but I think it was the right call. I had really slowed down and um, it would have taken us far, far, far beyond the final cutoff to get to the water. And I just didn't feel like it was the right decision for my crew or for you guys. I just felt like it was asking too much. So, so we decided to call it and come back next year. So I already have on the calendar the weekend after mother's day, a friend of mine and I are doing it again. And we've already got a crew starting to come together for it. So there you go. Shadow Bear. <laughs> I got a bone to pick with Shadow Bear. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I I have to say that um it it was um you know watching you train was like half of the joy of this for us, you know, oh, or for, for me was because you know, like lots of people are say that they're gonna do something. But then I was like, just watching, you know, and it'd be like, yep. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. And this is very intentional that I'm doing this. Oh, I'm trying some night running here. 
yeah, I'm going out uh, and and just doing, you know, doing different things. And really, um, it seemed like it, it seemed like about as honest an effort in the training part of it, you know, because lots of people show up on race day and you know what, do what they got with what they got, right? Mm-hmm. And and fight the good fight. I felt like you took yourself from where you were and then planned out, you know, you had a plan and you, you, you worked the hell out of the plan. And you know what, anybody standing at the start of a hundred miler, not to mention 112 miler, you, you know, most of us don't know if we're going to finish. Right. 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 And I honestly didn't know if I was going to, I woke up not Mm -hmm. feeling well. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember John came to pick me up to drive me to the start. And I'm like, I don't feel very well. I don't know how this is going to go, but let's. So we were starting to problem solve before we even started. Yeah, <laughs> and we just, yeah. you know, trying every, every aid station. How are you feeling now? What do we need? What do, and just kind of adjusting and trying to just keep moving forward no matter what. So it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. The whole last six months, it's just been a life-changing event for me. Like I will never be the same. In a yeah. Good <laughs> well, it, it was, it was really, um, you know, so it, it was, it was special to see you do that because from where you started and where you ended was like night and day, you know, mm-hmm. and um, just to kind of, a lot of people might not know the course, which is again, hard to believe. But um, when you talk about route 68, that's approximately mile 84. Yeah. Um, so that's a good, um, you know, that's a good chunk of this mm-hmm. and, um, you know, that's, and that's, um, you know, that's, that's pretty awesome. I know it's not what you wanted and, no. and all that, <laughs> but you know, what did you, um, what do you think about now you said that you have some, um, regrets or, or like stuff yeah. like that. So let's talk about that. What does that, so, what does that look like? So my regret at the route 68 is I was in a low the wheels kind of came off going over Powder Ridge and I in decompressing over the last few days and looking at it I question if I had eaten and somebody had just said here's some food here's a coke let's go we're not making any decisions till bluff head I don't know if we would have turned it around I don't know I was seeing double at that point and uh-huh. <laughs> and uh I wasn't <laughs> able to really speak at all. And my brain had pretty much shut down. So I probably shouldn't have been making any decisions. I was, Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably a mile out, somebody had asked, you know, we're, we're coming in. What do you think you're going to want? And I think I gave a death glare. (laughs) I don't fucking know. (laughs) You know, know, I, I don't know, you know, if we could have turned it around, I do remember feeling that once we got to bluff head, it was going to feel like the new day, right? Like when the sun comes up, like when you start, when you come alive again, Yeah. remember feeling like, just get me to bluff head. I'm going to feel new again. It will be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been questioning, we were only two sections out from that. Wondering, sure. you know, if, if we could have turned it around, I am already pain-free going about my life. Like I didn't do a whole lot this weekend. So like mm-hmm. clearly I thought I had left it all out there. Um, but now I'm questioning, did I really, was it just a low and did I just not try to go for that gear? You know, yeah. we always have that other gear underneath and did I just, did I just lose the mental battle? You know, that's kind of, I'll yeah. never, know. I'll never know, but I have to trust the decision-making of my crew and my crew thought I was done. So mm-hmm. they agreed. They thought, okay, you've given it your college try and I, I think you're done. Like, mm-hmm. so I have to, I have to trust that they were in a better position to make a decision for me and that they had my best. I absolutely believe they had my best in mind mm-hmm. and wanted me to get to the sound just as badly as I did. And I, I think it was the, I do trust that we made the right call. So, um, and we'll live to try again. You know? Gotcha. Hey, Fred, um, what are your, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, you should have just finished it. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but, but, but I have a couple of thoughts. One, Jackie, you, I, I think I said this on Facebook, you were kind of a magnet for like the best people in our sport through your training. Yeah. Like, like you, the people who were, who were in, in your corner and helping you and absolutely doing training yep. runs with you and everything. What a great bunch of people. I mean, oh, great. 
Got a Pablo Creed and Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yeah. And oh, really? Clubber Lang, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Fred. So, so, so that's true. And and you're you're talking like someone who's gonna definitely come back. Like you're oh, like, totally. You know, I wonder if I could have kept going. So you're def you're you're definitely gonna come back. So my friend I have a I'm not gonna say which friend it was because it's that that's their story if they wanna tell it. But I, a friend of mine and I have already marked our calendars for the Friday after Mother's Day. We're we're doing it again. We're going to end up at Rising Corner and we're going to do it. And I have friends that have approached me already to crew and pace us to make it happen. So it's already going to happen. So um, and I've already got a race in October <laughs> to get that freaking buckle because I'm over two right now. And then I'll go to Hamster Wheel three weeks later so I can practice the the mental toughness and being tired and the nutrition and the so I can practice some of that stuff where I feel like I need growth. So, so we've already got the plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a woman on a mission. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It's funny because like when I, um, I had heard, I kind of like, you know what? I kind of second guess myself too, because I started getting, um, I think somebody sent me, cause it was, it was, I think it was like, Boy, I don't know what. Let's see. Was it what time of day was it? Do you remember offhand? When I when I left, yeah. Um, I, I my watch had died right after yeah. the liquor store, so I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna guess like six thirty, quarter seven, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. It was. I knew if we went back into the woods, we were gonna need to bring our headlamps with us. Yeah, that's yeah. All, that's all I knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't um, really. Know. I I felt like because I heard the um there was some negotiation going on i heard that too yeah. yeah with the you know with the crew calling me asking me about cutoff times and stuff like that mm -hmm. and my thought was i mean and and instead of engaging in it i i felt like in hindsight i shouldn't have engaged in it <laughs> like a part of me you know like you try to picture all these crazy scenarios and this is what i would have said and this is what i would have done mm -hmm. like in some alternate reality I would have said, give me the fucking phone, get her on the phone. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Jackie, um, I'm going to meet you at, you know, I'm going to meet you at the next road crossing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just meet me at the next road crossing and then we'll talk about it. And then I wasn't going to fucking show <laughs> 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 or, or something like that or, or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, but it's good though, because at mile 84, you're show you're in spitting distance because you're right that last end of it really once you get to bluffhead you're almost it's, done it's smooth you're almost done. only one person's ever dnf'd after bluffhead and yeah. that was navigational errors right yeah so um i i would say that um there's a good actually maybe one maybe one more than that too but <laughs> for the most part it, it's like at that point, because the end of this, I think, for me at least, I find there's a big relief towards the end of a race because your body all of a sudden says, okay, the end is here. And right. it, it depends right. on gonna, how you're- We're going to do this. We're gonna actually yes. going to get to the sound, you know? Yeah. That's right. But and, I, I remember being afraid of this, the two sections in between, right? Oh, like yeah. The climbs going over Tri a ridge. I was starting to feel dejected every time I had to climb something. Yeah, Celeste, did you and, have something to say about Tri Mountain? Oh, uh, Tri Mountain is uh, stupid whore. It is. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So I didn't. I didn't have faith in myself to be able to tra traverse those two sections between where we were and Bluffhead. I didn't think I had what it took to get to Bluffhead. So, for whatever reason, I didn't. Yeah, think yeah. I, had it. I, I didn't think I, I saw had pictures it. of you along the way and toward. For the last part, you looked pretty depleted of glycogen. Like you had like, yeah, like a blank, like kind of yeah. a blank face. Yeah. You know, like you weren't. I wasn't. Weren't I wasn't anymore. taking on enough calories for sure. Yeah. I didn't eat very mm. much at Guida's. I didn't eat much at Park and Ride. <laughs> like I just, I, I, I got behind on calories, and so I just got depleted. I had it was like a when your phone dies. Like spring <laughs> yeah. energy. Well, you know, you that, just had your that, spring that energy nice going. And <laughs> right. You can't digest. So, you know, so yeah. you, you end up yeah. getting behind on calories. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, 
I I think it was a pretty awesome experience and I feel so damn thankful to be able to even toe the line and get as far as we did. I remember yeah. being out there with the crew in 2017. It was brand new to trail running. I was just starting to run again. I just run my first marathon a few weeks before and I was like, holy shit, what are these people doing? Like, <laughs> how are they doing this? You know, and mm. I didn't think I would ever, ever, ever be able to do something like this, you know? And so mm. once I got the taste of it, it was actually that weekend was the weekend I fell in love with trail running and the trail running community. And I, that's when I wanted to be a part of it. And mm. that was such a special weekend. And so when I finally got it in my head that, oh, I might be able to actually do this, you know, then I, you know, tried to throw everything I had at it. And it, I've learned a ton, you know, and it's okay. A yeah. lot of people DNF and it's okay. It's, um, I'll come back, I'll learn from it and I'll come back stronger and faster. And yeah, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. And the mental part of it is so, that's such a difficult, um, that's such a difficult thing. Like when, you know, the decision to drop and, you know, trying to balance the, um, did I, you know, do I have enough time to finish thoughts? Yeah. Like, cause that, like that wasn't good. Fred, Fred said it about a million times on the show here. He goes, people don't drop out because they can't go any further. They drop right. out because they think they're not going to finish. Right. I didn't think I didn't. Well, I knew we weren't going to get to Bluffhead by nine, but, um, but, but. I was worried that, I mean, it's one thing if you miss a cutoff by a little bit, it's mm -hmm. another thing if you miss it by a lot. And I, yeah. when, when we were like, how long is it realistically going to take to finish? Yeah. And they said, and, oh yeah, it's probably going to take another 15 hours. I felt yeah, like yeah. I got hit by a truck and I'm like, I don't have 15 hours in me. Like, here's, I, here's the, you know. <laughs> here's the, yeah. What, what I found you know. is that if I'm asking that question, I'm in deep shit. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. never a calculation to do. I mean, yeah. and, and I, I think that carries on for any kind of a race. Like if you're in a, if you're going to run a 5k, you know, you, you can't think like, you know, you run that first mile and you're like, holy shit, I just ran that fast. And now I have to do that two more times. Mm -hmm. No way. And if you think like, okay, I'm going to just try to get, fuck it. I'm going to run the second mile as hard as I can. And then damn the third mile, you know, we'll deal with that when it happens. And if you do it that way, it's, you can piece it together. Same thing with the marathon. Yeah. Like when you're just like, your guts are coming out at root at mile 22, 23. And you're like, oh my God, I just, there's no way. But if you just, you know, you get through that mile and then you deal with the next one. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like I, I, in hindsight, probably shouldn't have even been part of that discussion. That should have been a discussion with my crew yeah. and it should have just been, here, here's some calories. Here's some. Mm -hmm. you, obviously, I was depleted. I couldn't even talk. So yeah, yeah, I could yeah. Barely talk, and, right? And, and here, they should have been shoving food in my mouth and a coke. And here we go. And like, yeah, let's just go. Yeah. Let's just keep going. But you know, I think, I think I might have scared them a little bit with how depleted I was. So yeah, and and that's normal. <laughs> Which is though, fine. You know, you have to, you have to think about it too. Is yeah. that like your body and your brain is sit, you're you're running there and you're like consciously or unconsciously a lot of times we're trying to say to the people around us and to our you know if there's other people involved in the decision or to ourselves you know what this is i need i need to stop so i'm trying to give people that message mm -hmm. and sometimes our body knows how to fuck with us and will <sighs> will play on that or at least me that's yeah. what i find is yeah. that my body all of a sudden my knee hurts <laughs> and then I'm focusing on that. And now I don't want to do permanent damage to my knee. Oh, no, that mine, would be stupid. Mine you know? wasn't, it wasn't on the body. It was mm -hmm. all my, <laughs> all my trauma wounds. It was the, yeah. Oh my gosh. What am I doing to my friends? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've outstayed my welcome on the trail with my friends. Oh, oh my gosh. They're, yeah, they they yeah. don't want to be here out here with me anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they they're sick of oh. me. They're not going to be my friend anymore. Like oh, that's where God. that went for me. So by yeah. the time I came off of the trail at sixty eight, <sighs> I could barely look my crew in the eyes. I was just so full of shame and so full <sighs> of like, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Oh God, like, yeah. Just feeling like an utter failure. So and I couldn't communicate that. I'm getting a little teary. I thinking about it. No, no. But yeah, like I just, I, I lost the game 
<laughs> I've, <laughs> I've, I've lost a game that way too, where I've said, it's not fair to my wife yeah. to, to make her crew me. So I know better now that yeah. I don't fucking talk to her during the race. <laughs> God bless her. I love her to death, but I'm not going to yeah. talk to her during the race anymore. She's, she, I'm not going to have her be my crew. Um, because, because I, because I don't want, you know, because I love her. <laughs> I want to, you know, <laughs> I, because I, I can't have, I, cause I can't do that. You know, that mental that's, that was, um, when I ran the, uh, Western cut one twelve. it's like, do I want to spend the next 24 hours plus climbing the last 20 miles up Pike's peak? into elevation where I'm going to probably do one mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Like, no, and, and I can do that, but I'm going to be like the next three days, I'm going to be a fucking, I'm going to be a pop tart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, I don't want to do that to her. It's the only thing to do. I'll do permanent damage to our relationship. So yeah, we're going to just I'm not willing to do. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so it is, it's a battle to make sure that somehow you're not in that position with, with your crew right. either you know what i mean right. yeah like, yeah like they told me that um you guys were going to relax the the cutoffs however long it took for me to get to the shore but when we were doing the math which i should not be doing when i'm that tired yes um of how long it would take and what time that would be and all of yeah, that yeah. i Never. couldn't in good conscience do that to you guys like i i'm like i can't that's just too but far here's, beyond here's the punchline <laughs> and this is not to say this is not the, the bottom line is though, what we don't know is we don't know what's going to happen. We don't, we because don't you don't, it doesn't always get worse, you know? And then it's that, it's that battle too. Like, yeah. Um, you know, like I remember just Reagan, you know, walking with her after I denied entry, I didn't let her sit in my truck. Right. When we were going across on the trail there and it was about a 15 minute period where she went for not even 15 minutes, actually probably about five where she went from being complete toast to all of a sudden I can run, you know? So doing that math is, I think there's a problem in the calculations, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's unknown variables. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, was a, it was still a wonderful experience. And oh, I, I am oh. so thankful for all the memories with my crew. My crew is amazing. All of them. And I, yeah, yes. it was a really special time with them. Yeah, it, so it was I'm amazing. It was amazing to watch you do that. And, um, you know, congratulations to you for all of Thank the, you. Um, you know, what you put into it to get to that starting line. I mean, that was, in my mind, that was the real miracle because just staring that down, you know, we can try to take it a mile at a time, an aid station at a time, but still staring that down is a, um, it's 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 intimidating you know so yeah. you still have to toe the line if you're going to take it to an a station at a time you got to yeah get yeah here and you got yes to, you gotta put your shoulder to it i think you're going to finish next time jackie you know idea I, I, I believe so record. oh you did at vermont oh yeah at vermont i okay. i got to a, a 68 miles and uh and and just couldn't continue i thought and mm -hmm. i spent thinking about it and you know yeah. you, you you figure it out but it's it's tough. I mean, it was, I think it was mostly mental for me. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I think I was, I think I was slow. Like I think speed was a factor like the whole time. I, I fell behind the field before we even got to Newgate. So <laughs> but, I think I was DFL like right out of the gate. So we were already, you know, like all, uh, all day Friday, I was worried about getting to Rogers Orchard in time. And they're like, stop it. They kept telling me to stop. And I'm like, I do math for a living. So I'm like, uh -huh. you know, I'm doing math all day. Now, like, did, watching my spaces. And I'm like, I got to get to Rogers in time, you know. Did Mark Which, Kelly, yeah. did Mark Kelly pass you? He did. He passed us um, on that final, the final descent coming into, into guide us. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. okay. Huh. And, um, and, but now, um, Tim was still, Tim Hardy was still behind you. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> the other thing I didn't know was that I think people came into the finish about the time we were projecting that I would. 
Mm -hmm. according to the math we had at 68. Yes. So the next day, as we're watching all the posts on the page about what time people were coming in, I yes. was like, God darn it. You know, <laughs> you know Jackie, I, I have to say, and I'm, uh, I apologize that you brought this up before I did, because I wanted to reach out to you because that was a fear of mine is that I've dropped out of races because at times I thought that I wouldn't make cutoffs. And the only, you know, it's always nice to extend a cutoff for somebody. And it's yeah. always nice. It's like being in class when somebody extends the due date of the paper. Right. But right. if you're the guy who stayed up all night studying to, you know, to get that paper in <laughs> and, and all that it's, it is um, kind of unfair. So I, I, um, you know, I hope that didn't impact, um, you know, the decision, no. you know, too, too no. much there, but it, it no, I did. think it's only fair. If you guys were going to do it for me, that you would do it for other people, yeah, like, but, you know, I mean, that's just fair is fair. So. Yeah, we can. And, and, you know, maybe I'll address, I'll kind of address that right, right now is that um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have normally have done that. I probably mm -hmm. would have just um, called, you know, at 45 is the cutoff, 45 yep. is the cutoff. Right. Yep. Uh, and that's then, fair. Yeah. Then I started thinking, okay, hey, Mark is running across the country. I'm not going to um, cut him off, right? Right, right. So he yeah. finishes 15 minutes ahead. Yep. And then Fred comes in, which is, you know, I didn't mind because, um, you know, because uh, he was pretty, you know, he was pretty close to Mark mm -hmm. um, at, at a certain point. But then after it became a little bit longer, then I was like, okay, if I... Um, the issue, the issue really was, is that we had nine finishers and he made, he made 10, yeah. which was great. And yep. when he made 10, it made everybody's races, everybody's results official. Yeah. And if you, um, if you have nine finishers, it, it washes the times out of the records. Oh, geez. Okay, so, so Justin Kowski, who got the, who got the overall course record, Mm -hmm. He would have had it, but it would have said unofficial race and it wouldn't have uh, showed up on the leaderboard. And so it would have shown uh, Jacques up there who had a good run yeah. the year before, but still, yeah. it was still not as fast as Justin. So I wanted to make sure that we preserved at least his place on the board. And of course, and, and it's also, it's, you know, uh, I'm not an asshole. I, I like, I like to, you know, I, I want people to be able to, you know, to, to be able to finish like that. But mm -hmm. the downside is the effect that it had on you. So I, I do want to apologize. It's okay. Honestly, I really think that it was the right. I, I, I believe that our crew made the right decision given what was going on. I, I'm not fully aware <laughs> of what my state was, you know, they were much more conscious than I was. And I have to believe that we made the right call. So I'm not even questioning it. I'm not, you know, I'm learning okay. from it okay. and I'm going to come back and I'm going to tweak my training and double down and, you know, we're going to come back and. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to yeah, hear we're that. Fine. So. We're fine. We're yeah. fine. Good. How far, yeah. how far did you make it at, uh, at hamster wheel? How many miles? Uh, 80. Okay. Oh. So, you, so you did more miles. Oh, what's bigger, 80 work. or 84, Fred? I mean, do you have a calculator? <laughs> well, and there's a big difference between hamster yeah. wheel and the cup. Yes, that's Absolute what I'm saying. Like, that's a lot more of an effort. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hamster wheel's yeah. rough, man. Hamster wheels, <laughs> it's no fucking hopping Hodges, right? But <laughs> no, <laughs> kind of. No. Yeah. It, no, it was cool because we all got to go to sleep. I got to um Jill and John came over on Sunday and we got to talk about, you know, kind of debrief about the race. And then we went out to lunch and then I've been hanging out and I'm like, I'm tired, but I'm not injured. And I, yes. I'm not even sore anymore. And Did I see you running that sleeping giant yesterday? Was it, it was you? a hike, but yeah, we went up to the tower trail and back. Yeah. Like I'm, oh my gosh. I'm getting burnt again. Like I, I yeah. and I'm going to Jimmy's 12 hour on a week from Saturday. I will see you there. Hey, um, <laughs> okay. so listen, I do want to, yeah. um, Jackie, first of all, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. When your effort there and, and your transformation, um, I want you to say hi to two people who are uh, joining us now. Um, we have, uh, let's see, I just want to make sure that they're on and they can hear us here. Uh, Chris and Steve, can you guys hear us? Looks like Steve's connecting. Oh, well, Chris okay. is here. Chris is there. All right. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you can. we can. All right, good. All right. And Steve, are you there? 
Uh-oh. Maybe you're muted. It doesn't okay. seem well. Cute. I guess maybe he'll he'll pop on in a second there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, joining us, um, we have uh, Chris Bennett and Steve Stark. So, um, uh, Chris, first of all, welcome to Cultra. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. And Steve, are you still not there? So, um, yeah. yeah, I guess once once we hear you here, we'll uh, we'll be able to say hi. So. Wanted to have, um, we also have, um, uh, so that Chris, so that you know, we have uh, Jackie Smith on the line too, so. Hi, Jackie. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm doing well on yourself. Good. So um, let's talk a little bit. Now, Chris, this was your first uh, first shot at the cut, right? Yes, sir. All right. So um, uh, first of all, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself, like maybe where you're from and things like that. Well, I'm from West Southfield, Connecticut, so I'm about five minutes down the street from the start, and uh, I've been running since about 2018, mm-hmm. and uh, just progressively got in the longer, longer distance. This is my first 100, and really my, I guess my second ultra, alto- or third ultra altogether. I've done a couple 50s, and uh, yeah, I, I, I always wanted to do the 100 mile distance. I was going to run the Vermont 100, but you know, going up to Vermont is kind of a, a chore. So I was like, what's what's kind of around here? And uh, I know a couple, I've seen over on the interwebs on Facebook about the Cut 112. So I kind of been following up for a couple of years and I decided to uh, jump aboard this year. Very good. Hey, Chris, can you get your camera to work there? I, you know, I've been trying. To, I can't freaking figure this out. <laughs> so there's like a video thing in your left, in the left corner. If you click on that, that should work. No? I'm, I'm on my phone. So it's oh, like, okay. maybe that's it. I don't know how to do. All right. Uh, I don't know. This is terrible. Steve Stark here. Is is, is there any uh, video for me? Uh, yeah. Not yet. Let's oh, see. Man. But good, says, good to Steve, have you there, Steve. That's Steve where the video is supposed to be, so that's good. It's just, uh, it says Steve. Yeah. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just change fonts to, uh, you know, express yourself or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you are, Steve. Oh, we saw something. There's oh, Steve. Mine work? No, mine's not working. This is terrible. Yeah, look, uh, look in the bottom left hand corner. There was like a video with an X over it, and I clicked the X, and it brought it brought it to life. Let's try this. It, Fucking problem mine working? solving. No, nope. come on. <laughs> I, need, I need the. Uh, I need the. What's that thing on Apple? The um, the Apple help desk. I don't know what it is. The genius. No. I need to be a genius. Hold it. Oh I, yeah, bring it to the we, genius desk. I'll <laughs> use. We have special AI here, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to ask the Magic 8 Ball. Um, is Chris Bennett ever going to figure out his fucking camera? Oh, oh, it's terrible. The Magic 8 Ball, it says yes. Oh, so, oh, okay. There you go. So I, it's looking Doesn't pretty good. It doesn't say what, though, Chris. You know, we're yeah. actually going to have a battle between uh, AI <laughs> and the 8 Ball. Because it's <laughs> actually, it's far superior to anything that... Um, you know, to any actual, you know, these other chat GPT and all those things, they're all kind of overrated and it's a lot of bullshit. You know, the magic eight ball doesn't fuck around. You just, you ask it a question and it's either like, I'm not going to tell you, or this is definitely the answer. So it doesn't equivocate or say, I hope this day finds you well, you know, so. This is terrible. Why is this working? Well, um, I'm sorry, guys. I- I'm just a uh, blank space. No, that's okay. We'll we'll figure it out. So um, <laughs> we, you've got a voice. It's yeah, okay. Can hear you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, okay, so why don't? So I I wanted to have you guys on because like some of the most popular movies that every you know that any that are out there. Okay, they're all like you think of like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids, the Sun, Sundance Kid. You think of Batman and Robin. You think about like uh, I don't know. Like there's so many movies, right? the bromance okay so (laughs) um so you guys start on the line two different people did you guys know each other before this race not at all not at all okay and so um tell us how did you meet uh yeah i'll go i'll go first i I was like what were 12 hours in into the race I, i got turned around like right after roger's orchard's going up to ragged mountain there uh-huh. like 
I don't know why, but I, there was like a, a rock and I went around the rock and then went back to Roger's Orchards, like total idiot. I was oh. in the pain cave and then I stopped at, at the, at the road and I sat there for a second. I was like, ah, I'm going to go back. Hey, regardless, went back up, found the top. I got all lost inside of a uh, ragged mountain and then finally got down to Cary street and I'm at the aid station and I'm just like, I'm just sitting there. <laughs> and then Steve, Steve just rolls up and he looks like he's in the pain cave. And then uh, we hung out there for a second, ate a couple piece of pizza, had some soda. And then uh, Will Jara comes up and then we kind of went off the three of us into the end of the night. <laughs> it was definitely a big awesome. link up. We had, we had all converged because we all felt like crap, basically. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's, that's awesome because I'll tell you what, that, that, that must have sucked because the place you're talking about, like heading back towards Roger's Orchard. Now, when you hit the street, did you recognize that you were on the street that you didn't want to be on? Oh, for sure. I, I, oh, I got okay. up there. I was like, this is terrible. I was like, this sucks so bad. I called my buddy. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I'm so discouraged. This is terrible. How did I get here? Because cause that's a hill to go back up, right? I mean, well, that's a steady yeah. climb. Well, I can contradict it a little bit because uh, I was actually a little bit on the come up because I had bonked way earlier. I don't know if you remember in the evening time, I felt like garbage, garbage. And then as I uh, came into the night, the sun went away. I felt cooler. You know, I was actually uh, in the whole of the race. I was actually on the come up. I didn't know it, but I bonked again a few times. And it, it, you know, it was a up and down battle. But at that moment, it was dark, and I remember feeling like kind of at least cool and relaxed. And you know, going into the night, I felt comfortable. So, and I met Chris, Got and we, we started. Hey! To train. Hey! You know, so hey, there was, look there was at that. Hey, there we go. Just there. two words, okay? <laughs> Magic fucking eight ball. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's three, but you know, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, Nart's words were echoing in my head too. He was like, "Oh, it's all fun and games now." That's and then right. the alligators. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, wow. So, um, so then, so you guys started running together at uh at at the um, Carrie Street. Yeah, let's say hiking together. Hiking. Okay. No, I, listen, <laughs> I've been there, okay? Yeah. Your your time was faster than my time was when I did it. So um I, I certainly know I certainly know what it's like to to walk for eons and stuff like that. So um uh so uh, Scott and Sarah Slater uh were at the age station there. So you guys got to uh talk to them a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were awesome. They, so they gave generous. us everything. Yeah. They've, they've been there. They've done that, you know, Eastern States, Western States, all the States in between. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're just like, eat whatever you want here. It's, yes. it's all yours. And yep. yeah, we took them up on that. Good. Good. Three That's... headlights was better than one at that point. And then, you know, That's Chris sure. had uh, a couple pacers coming in and out and uh, well, other guys too, even Will and, you know, people had pacers and everybody would seem fresh. And we, we were, as a pack, we were just better. That's the moral of the story for me anyways. Uh -huh. Kind of like misery uh, loves company. Oh, that's for sure. I, I was, was trying like, to be funny, but there was really nothing funny. But I kept joking <laughs> about like, I don't know, what, whatever I was saying, just to just to make us laugh and, and, and just keep, keep up the good morale. Because I knew there was a lot to come. You know, there were points later in the race where it got pretty – bleak i thought i was like i don't know man <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of miles left yeah yeah no there's definitely so uh so where did it how did it go from there like um so you guys left ragged mountain and then you got to edgewood right yeah it, it was just kind of hiking from there it was like the the whole night of just hiking mm. <laughs> because i I, never, never... On edgewood. I think we jogged that? on edgewood did we okay <laughs> Fine. Yeah, we, we, the we, road and like, we had like small stretches here and there that we could get a momentum. But after we got to the mountainous little like, you know, those Higby and uh, the two sections before that, couldn't really get much of a run going. So it was a hike run kind of battle. Mm. Mm. Wow. Now, Jackie, did you find that to be true as well? Yes. Like going over Higby? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, we did. We did try. Um, 
in a couple of sections, my pacers were like, all right, let's try to do a little shuffle and try to like pick up mm -hmm. the momentum a little, a little bit. But um, yeah, I, and I think that kind of messed with me too, because when I was doing recon and checking out the different sections, obviously I was a lot fresher and could run a lot more. So when I'm coming through, you know, totally gassed over the weekend, I couldn't, you know, I was afraid of like tripping and falling and it just, I didn't have the same kind of coordination. I'm like, why am I not running? <laughs> this is taking me so much longer. And it just added to the, you know, the battle in the brain that I was having. Yeah. Kind of beating up on yourself. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, that can, you were running pretty good uh, on the road going into Mutt's End. I like passed you on uh, driving on the road, and, and uh, you and your pacer were doing pretty well there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was feeling pretty good there. Um, yeah. Surprisingly, I, what, I had heard people talk mm -hmm. about when you're doing a, when you're doing a hundred, when the just hang on until the sun rises. And when the sun rise, it's like you're just like a brand new person. Mm. And we were coming down off of Castle Craig, Castle Craig when that happened. And we watched the sunrise, you know, as we're coming down. And it actually did feel like that. Like, holy crap. So like the next section, we did a lot of jogging in there. Um, mm. Felt really good. So did you get your feet wet at the end of uh, just before you got to the dam? Or was the, there's like a stream at the end of Castle Craig uh, yep. just before you get on the dam there. I didn't yep, know what that stream looked like. So, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. We actually fell coming. <laughs> I fell. I've got like all these bruises all over me. Um, the last, there's like one big like rock thing you got to like scooch down. Yeah. And I had grabbed a tree and I'm coming down and I lost my footing and I went down. I grabbed the tree and uh -huh. I reached my left hand out like grabbing the rocks was going to save me. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't. No. <laughs> Went down pretty hard. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my gosh. So did you how about you guys? Did you keep your feet most of the time or how'd it go? Yeah, I mean, I I think I hit a couple mud spots, get my got my feet wet. Um, mm -hmm. but like there's really no knock on wood, there's no falling. There, there was a couple times where I thought I was going to. It was like I, Ragged Mountain was just terrible for me. I, I didn't even know how to get down from there. I when when you kind of start to descend a little bit. Yeah. You go between like two ledges or yeah. two big rock walls, oh. and you, and I, I go, I, I don't know where I'm going. And then when I get there, there's like a giant, like a, a big freaking spider just sitting there at, at like the, the top. I was like, I'm oh, not going over yeah. this freaking thing. I was like, this is terrible. I was like, I sat there for like 10 minutes, look at this stupid spider. I'm like, I'm so I heard my legs. I've heard stories of that. I think I saw pictures of that spider got kicked around. Did you? Yeah, it was it was huge. I don't know what it was. Wolf spider. Uh, it's a, it's it's yeah. like one of those things that suck your brain out or something. <laughs> I'm all set. Jeez. Thank you. And and then there's also I heard somebody also talked about grabbing a snake during the run. Oh, like that was it. last year. No, no was... Michael Presti did that. Michael I... Presti mentioned in his thing. I forget where he was, but he went to reach for something and felt the snake, and you know, luckily he didn't get bit. But, uh, on the chimney last year in the pouring rain, Mark Kelly picked up a snake oh, and it yeah. struck at him and he threw it backwards <laughs> and hit his pacer with it, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> which I found hilarious, but that's, I'm not a nice person. That's good for him, right? I mean, yeah. You know. It's like a superhero move. There were oh, a couple big snakes at the Hartford Reservoir. When I mm. went to put my hat in the water, I definitely almost stepped on a big black snake. And I yeah. jumped a bit. I saw a bear and a fox too. So that was a really cool. So, that was a, a you bear, did. A let's a let's talk night. about this. So Shadow Bear is kind of the patron saint of the whole event. And I didn't know that anybody saw a bear this weekend until yeah. I saw your video, Steve. So that's um that's pretty cool. So tell us about the encounter. Well, it was just uh, walking right up the trail towards me. And, it, you know, my head was down at first, but I was at a road crossing. So I wasn't very far from a neighborhood and a road. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he didn't startle me uh, far away. So when he approached me, I took my phone out and videotaped him. But, you know, I made noise and just like what you're supposed to do. And I could tell that he was accustomed to seeing people and he just walked right by me. Yeah. He did kind of a stretch as if to ask can I get something? <laughs> yeah. So, so you basically no. told him, I'm going to cancel your ass. So don't, well, you know, I'll put I you all over you social go media. This way, I'll go that way. And I, I did hear way. that. That was a good, that was a good talk you had with him, right? I'm going this way. You're going that way. No questions. 
I, I saw Barrett they, Giafrida. They oh, what's that, Chris? I said I saw oh. Barrett Giafrida. Oh, you the, did. The pan, the panda oh, yes, the panda oh. bears. <laughs> we, we, we were coming into Giafrida, and my pacer like hears a horn, and people are screaming. And she thinks it's like a bear horn. And she'll, she'll probably be embarrassed I'm telling this, but it was like really funny. She starts like, hey, bear, hey, bear. And then we, we, we get close. And it's just a person, or was it Christina? I think her name was, in, in, a, in a bear costume with like one of the old whaler, like blow horns. It was, oh, yeah. it was fairly funny. Yeah. Yes. That was, uh, I, I saw videos of that. That's like, that's just special. I mean, between that and uh, Will Jara's uh, karaoke, <laughs> during the whole thing <laughs> i don't know if you saw that that's um i saw that she, that's she really wanted me special. to sing karaoke but i was i was already in the pain cave i was like get away i just need to eat something and give me more of those hot towels because those are those are amazing mm. oh okay anybody, anybody get a hot towel at gia frida no this is i i didn't i haven't you what didn't? is this hot towel you speak of i i, I forgot I, I i forgot who gave it to me and I, and I apologize but it was like the most amazing thing that you could have when you're coming out of at coming out of the night, you're mm. cold, you're sweaty, and they're like, "You want a hot towel?" Like I'm like, "Yeah, give me a hot towel," and it was it felt great. I just towel they off and leaving there, like a Barbasol <laughs> shave, and, and was like, yeah, I was like, I they're ready to, to do everything up. It was it was great. It was amazing. Wow, very cool. Um, so Celeste, we haven't talked to you about your um experience that much. Now I know you kind of went into this. Um, you know, a, a lot on your plate, like just like so many things on your plate. So yeah. I think it was, um, I was surprised. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't have been, not that I was surprised to see you start, but I would have, I wouldn't, I would have understood if you had said, you know what, guys, this was, you know, this was good. I kind of wanted to do this, but I'm not going to do this, <laughs> but you, you got pretty darn far. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your experience? Well, I didn't know it at the time, but a few weeks ago, I lost my voice, which I think I told everybody on the podcast and I just, it's not been right since, but I was like, oh, fine, whatever. And um, honestly, I got through over 50 miles, perfection. Like it was not one single dark moment, like everything went perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then it might've been ragged or right after Cary Street where I was like, oh, I don't feel right and just kind of pushed through it ignored it whatever it kept going and then we started going up west peak and not even a mile in i was like losing consciousness like it was just insane like i had to sit down and just trying to hold on because i was so sick um and no matter what like i i did calories i was hydrated i was you know, there was no reason for it that we could find. But at that point, I was doing like 50 minute miles and I pushed through 20 miles like that, where I was just not like, I don't even remember half of it because I was so mm. out of it. Um, I now did you was Craig with you at that point? Or did you have some kind of a pace? I had or Selena with me when mm -hmm. it first started happening. And we got to Edgewood. And I sat down for a little while and I'm like, usually if I sit down and eat something, mm -hmm. I'm good. Like I'm good for another, whatever. And I sat down, I had potatoes, I had watermelon. I had, I forgot what else, but I like a whole bunch of calories. And then I went, it's like a little over a mile from Edgewood to 71. So we figured we would try a mile and see if I could stay upright. And I did. So I kept going. And then we left, I remember leaving, where was it, um, to go up Lamentation. So I, at the liquor store, mm. I had like donuts and hash browns and all sorts of meals. So I was Fireball. like, oh, I'm great. I got two, you know, you go up Spruce Brook Road mm -hmm. and turn into the woods. And I had to sit down in that small amount of space, even after eating a whole meal. And then somewhere over Lamentation, I completely lost any sense of anything. I don't remember all of it. Like I was not talking, but then I was saying like gibberish shit. And then next thing I know, I'm sitting on a tree next to Mark Kelly. He's feeding me like gummies. And my pacer Liz was there. His pacer, Peter Hornack was there. And 
I was just like, where am I? What's happening? Apparently I was asking for my mother. I don't know. Um, so Stefan stayed with us to make sure I got down off the mountain. And then of course, cause I'm an idiot. I'm like, let's keep going. Um, and on my way up Higby, I was starting to lose any sense of anything again. Like I just, mm. and same thing, like you were saying, Jack, I, where it was just like, if something happens to me, I'm putting the event in danger. I'm putting you in danger. I'm putting my pacers in danger. I'm putting myself in danger. And I just, I was like, I can't. And my, my crew was like, you are not going like, cause again, I'm good at pushing through pain. I'm pushing through all that shit. Um, but after 20 miles, not getting better, only getting worse. It was time to say, okay, this is not mm. safe. And I have to stop. It turns out I have a major sinus infection that's all in my eyes. And, and then I have a respiratory infection. So apparently I went into the doctor. He's like, what do you mean you did 70 something miles? He's like, you shouldn't have been able to do three. So, you know, it is what there it is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So I'm thinking, cause I've notched you in a couple of weeks and then anchor down. So I'm thinking about maybe trying again in September to just do it for fun. Mm-hmm. Cause oh, you mean just go out and, and do it? And do it. Yeah, as one does. So <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely well, that, gonna do it next year. But yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah, well, right. so- I, the good news is like, yeah, my feet are covered in blisters and whatever. But like hmm. my recovery was non-existent because my body was completely fine. Like I wasn't my I wasn't sore. I didn't have any of that problems hmm. after the fact. I, the medications I'm on now are making me sick because I don't handle them well, but it was just one of those days. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oh my gosh. That sounds like that's, that's scary when you lose um, a sense of reality like that, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't just like a hallucination where like, I see something, I realize I'm hallucinating. Like I have zero memory of my yeah. life. Yeah. No. I, and I would have pulled you from the course. You well, know, no. And like, should yeah. have been pulled from the course. Like yeah. I, yeah. Yep. I 1000% made the right decision. And sometimes after DNF, you go back, like you were saying, Jackie, where you're like questioning it and did I do it? And did I not do it? And I 1000% made the right choice. Um, Apparently my crew had already made it. They were just humoring me for a little bit, but like. Mm. They should have just told you where you you were there. This is fucking Guilford. (laughs) You're in Guilford. Okay, (laughs) great. Uh, I did. I did cry because we came back down Higby. I didn't go over. Um, Mm -hmm. and like, I just bawled, like it was, you know, cause it's sad. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially cause at that point, like based on everything else, I would have finished, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you looked really strong when you passed me on Friday. I was like flying. Like I said, 50 something miles went perfectly without, uh, without a hitch. Peter Mm -hmm. KO might be the best pacer ever. Um, Hmm. yeah, he was, he was great. Um, like you said, crew pacing every, all of the people there, the community was just spot on. So yeah, we'll get it next year. What are you gonna do? I'll probably do it before then just for fun, but. Yeah, I think our, I was telling somebody just the other day, I think that the Connecticut trail running community really shines during cut weekend. Hmm. Everybody comes out of the woodwork and everybody jumps in and helps everybody else out and, like helping everybody and, and like the runners are usually going after some goal they haven't done before, but a lot of times the pacers are too. They're yeah, doing new things that they've never done before. And it's just such a special oh, time. I can't tell you how many people like, okay. So, uh, Carice ran the first time in the, at night during the first cut, first time she had ever been in the woods during. Oh, same with night. me. And yep. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. Going, going over ragged. Um, Stefan, ran 12 miles, which was his longest run ever. Um, then the next day he ran 20 miles, which was his longest ever. You know, so he paced twice. He, he brought us in from uh, um, from uh, Bluffhead, right? Mm-hmm. And um, Did he steal well, all your food? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> um, so, no, but what he did, he did make a... Um, after I'll tell you this, here's a little little trivia, little ragged cuts trivia. Um, and I I have it here. I just don't want to like rip my headphones off right now. 
he after the event he made me a plaque that had all of the names of everybody who ran Aww. and paced and um the whole thing and wow. i think to my knowledge that may or may not and he can confirm may, that may or may not have been his first ever award that he generated so That's i think you epic. might be right i think i remember yeah. hearing that yeah so, oh what a special thing yeah, yeah yeah so he made he made that and it was um you know it was it was really cool it had the date on it and the whole thing the shape of connecticut and the whole thing so mm. um so yeah you're right it's absolutely special um and and i'm i have to say that when we first did this in 2017 um, when, when two of us did it and had, I think 23 people joined in or at least stopped by to say hi for a little bit or crude or did whatever. Um, we, you know, the, the intent was to have a hundred mile race for Connecticut because I was looking around and saying, you know what, there's not one. Why don't we have one? Like everybody, everybody <laughs> else has one. Like I want one here. And, you know, and we knew that it wasn't going to, you know, is it ever going to be a big traditional race? I don't, I don't, I think just the way the land ownership structured, it would be uh -huh. a near impossible thing to do, but who knows? And I'm not going to say that it's impossible, I guess. Right. So, um, but um, yeah, there were so many, so many cool things that happened. Like here's, here's one for you. So um uh, Sherry Bilby had agreed to start off the 50 mile race. Um, it had agreed to help me start off the race by handing out shirts and handing out bibs. Kind of Celeste, you did that last year. I did it last year. Yeah. With the you jumped mile. in and you said, yep, no problem. Because at, at five o'clock in the morning after being up all night and me trying to track everybody and do all that shit, I'm not like very good at like staying on track with that and trying to time people who are coming in and it's too much. I can't do it. So you helped out with that. Sherry agreed to do that this year because you weren't going to be there. And then the issue was, <laughs> this was at 515. The issue was, is that, um, uh, is, is that Justin <laughs> was running so fucking fast. Um, and, and I have to mention this too. Uh, John Snow was running pretty damn fast too. Yeah, he, he was kicking ass okay. too. So he was 10 minutes ahead of Justin going into uh, Ragged Mountain. Um, and then I was at Cary Street and they both came out together. Um, he fell. He got hurt. John. Yeah. 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 That's that's um, that's what I heard. And he he made it to he was with Justin um, uh, up into, you know, certainly out of Cary Street. Um, and then um, dropped it halfway. You know, he dropped it. Um, Mutt's end, you know, at mile 62. Um, so. But, you know, just he just did an incredible, you know, he he just was on, he was just throwing everything down. The two yeah. of them were, and it was so exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but so back to our story here. So Justin's cooking and going towards the finish. And then I'm sitting there and it's like two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning in the liquor, in the liquor store parking lot. And we're sitting there trying to do the math, trying to figure out, okay, what time do I need to leave here to get to the finish line so that I can meet Justin at in Guilford? And so we put it into ways and it's 45, uh, 42 minutes. 45, yeah. Yeah. 42 minutes. And then I'm like, okay, so where does, when do I leave? Like, where is he when I have to leave? I said, if he gets to the last stop with four miles to go, am I going to be able to beat him there? And nope. say, nope. <laughs> so then it's like, okay, so that's not going to work. So then when do we go? And then we kind of decided, okay, probably Timberline is the way, like, you know, when he has 11 miles to go, um, that's probably something that I can, you know, hopefully beat him back at. So then we're like, okay, good. And so then we're watching through the night and then I'm starting to think, okay, here he is. Oh, he's at, you know, he's at guide is always at this. He's at 68. Oh, he's at, you know, <laughs> All, all these stops and then all of a sudden we're like oh he's at a bluff head and then i'm like fuck uh -huh. and then i figure out that at, at the pace he's going that if i start the race at 5 15 and then hop in my car i'll have um he'll be there in 45 minutes 
like, and I had 42 minutes to get there. And so then I say, you know, then he went faster and then got out of route, you know, he hit Timberline and there was no way it was going to happen. So I had to all of a sudden turn to um, Sherry and say, hey, listen, could you please start the race for me? And by the way, could you give the speech to everybody at the starting line and, um, you know, just hand out all this, you know, like handle the whole fucking 50 uh, 50 miler for me. So um, I, I went to the finish line and saw Justin uh, finish there. Finish line was drastically changed from last year due to tidal erosion and different things. You know, there was a gully that you had to climb through. Some people got it like knee deep water. Some people got, you know, just a little bit of mud. Um, uh, when Justin came through, we, we went over the rocks because I didn't know any better at that time. Um, but it was, it was fun. So I, I do want to recognize uh, what Sherry did though. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I want to thank her because she was an absolute rock star for me to drop that on somebody like some, you know, some people would have taken to that and other pe- most people would have been like, Oh, I don't know about that, yeah. you know, but she stepped right up and did that. So I and think she was up all day because she oh, yeah. paced me on Friday and then she paced me again on, on Saturday. So she, she was, yes. yeah, she, she, yeah, she did great. So perfection in mm-hmm. honor of that in in honor of Sherry's efforts, I want to rename um, that 50 mile race in her honor. So we're going to call it the Sherry Bilby's butt 50 mile. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. I'm sure she'll be honored. Our, she'll love it. I mean, yeah. So I so can't, quest- can't wait to be like, Sherry, I did your butt. I did your butt. So is anybody, oh, so my. we're, we're going to do, we're going to do Sherry Bilby's butt. Is anybody else in? <laughs> do you want in? I mean, I don't know. It just like, um, <laughs> You know, so really, I can't. She was such a sweetheart that, um, you know, I it was just wonderful, you know, uh, to have her there. And and um, you know, so you know, the efforts that she did were were awesome. So, um, and like a bunch of you know, just so many people out there. You know, Bill Gibbs at you know over at um, uh, Rogers Orchard. You know, he kind of kept track of everybody there, and you know, Andy O and. Um, you know, and, and lots, lots of different people, you know, uh, helping out there, you know, the, um, yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's just been really, it was, it was quite a weekend to see. So, um, and so when you, when you say this, this is kind of like what in a way I had envisioned, like having the whole community together like this and Mm -hmm. have it be about everybody doing their thing, you know, and I kind of felt like in a lot of ways, my role was much more just ceremonial. Um, I didn't really have to do much of anything except for give a, um, a worried, uh, you know, worried uh, cautionary tale in the beginning and hand out some buckles at the end and keep track of people, you know, but most people were keeping track of themselves anyway. So they didn't need me to tell them where they were. So um, I think moving towards the future, the goal is to have, the event run itself in some way, you know, that's, that's the intent is that it shouldn't be something that, you know, culture puts on. It should be something that just ideally just happens. And, you know, there will be a structure, you know, ideally there will be some sort of a structure just to allow that to happen and to allow everybody to kind of support each other, you know, no, really no different than what it was this weekend, but just without, you know, without anybody's name directly associated with it in case somebody allegedly wanted to sue somebody, right? <laughs> um, so, Fred, did I say that right? <laughs> Good enough. You know. Close enough, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, now that it's already said. You can't yeah, lose. yeah. So I, I think we're going to probably even maybe talk about it I don't know, in the future, I might send out some notes to some people and maybe it, um, something to mention is that Jimmy's, uh, live, you know, Live Loud Running has the Brooksvale uh, 12 hour race. And that's going to be at, um, in Hamden on uh, June 15th, um, starting at eight o'clock uh, for Live Loud Running. And um, it's going to be like, I think like everything is going to be there. So I'll have, um, you know, I owe, couple people hoodies and things like that i'll have those there um i'll have um uh what i think it's jacques sarbach 
um, you know, our good friend is um, very sadly uh, going to, I mean, it's, it's good for him. He's got, you know, he's got a, um, you know, the next stage of his life out in, uh, out in the West coast. Um, so we're going to wish him well there, um, you know, and maybe some other places as well, but at least that's going to be uh, one of the places um, where we get to hang out and say goodbye. So, um, uh, and then probably talk some more about the cut, you know, if anybody's around uh, to do that, you know, and, and talk about what the future holds and what it might look like, uh, you know, what it might look like next year. So, uh, so it should be good. Um, I've been talking like way too much now, but um, so I, I want to get back to you guys and, and tell us um, like Steve and Chris, how did your, you know, bring us through the end of the race now. So you like, maybe as you approach uh, Bluffhead, how did it, how did it go from there or anything dramatic happened before then? Uh, by then we were, I think rolling. I mean, he brought in his uh, brother-in-law, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. C yep. C my brother -in -law. Yeah. CC yeah. Collins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the kids call him, and that's what I called him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. CC Collins? No, his, his real name is Colin, but my when my kids were younger, all my wife's family, my kids couldn't really pronounce all their names, so they just took their first letter of each uh, of their name, and that's what they called them. So, like, oh. Colin would be CC. I have a brother-in-law named Jared. He was JJ. And then I have a sister-in-law named Sarah. For whatever reason, she was Ra Ra. I don't I don't know how that came about, but okay. So it's easy. So Colin pretty much got me into ultra running. Um, so I've done a few races with him, and then he's always wanted to do the cut, but he kind of got hurt. He's been hurt. He got hurt in my yard, <laughs> blew his knee out, and then um, I asked him to come and pace me, and then he he took the uh, the end of the race. So he met he met us at some aid station and he's pretty much like, all right, it's time to go. So he kind of oh. picked up the pace for us. So he, he kind of pulled us through the last, what, 20 miles, 18 miles. So he kind of, yeah, kind you of know got who us else going. was good at that was the, the lady that was the Panda. She was really <laughs> good about getting you out of the aid station. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of there. She, You're talking about Christine. Uh, Christine, yeah. uh, Chen she was so nice yeah. and I was so grumpy, but she got me right out of there. Yeah, she's like that. We, we all wanted to stay and have a good time, and she's like, "You gotta go." Yeah, yeah. no more, no more egg sandwiches, no more hot towels. <laughs> wow. like, just like that, we, we, right? We, yeah. They fucking give yeah. you that shit. They give you that shit, and then they take it away. They just, they just wave it right in front of your face. And then yeah, they, like get for, out of here. I thought that was out of my mind for seeing the panda and the other inflatable stuff going on and dancing. <laughs> there was I like bananas. Bananas humping sumo wrestlers. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. So she's like, Do you want coffee? And you know, you're like, how about some coffee? And she's like, yeah, coffee's for closers. Like, I'll see you in <laughs> Guilford, okay? Oh no, I wanted that chair. I just wanted that chair so bad. And I sat down in it and she was like, Oh, you can have a sandwich, but then you gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but she stung you out though, didn't she? Did she do like death metal? Was that was that you? Yeah, she played your favorite song and uh, just, you know, slap on the butt and get out of there. There you go. I well, smoked you know, a little doobie there. It, it could be worse. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, um, all right. So then so then you're cruising. Yeah, because I think I heard you guys. Um, I think I read that um, maybe Michael Lopresti mentioned uh, the fact that um, that you guys came past him towards the end. Yeah, yeah. We, we did. Uh, uh, Chris, he, he was whispering in my ear as he went by. He was like, keep running, keep running. But I yelled to him. I said, um, come with us. Come with us, Mike. Because he was with us from the beginning. I don't know. He oh, yeah. Been of us the whole time, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, he, he was crushing it, man. I don't know him very well, but he, he was, you know, he was actually really good to me at mile 30 or 40. He was giving me some good chatter telling me yeah. go go on yeah just keep your pace and oh that's too fast he, he said that and i was like you're right that is too fast because we're only at mile 40 and you know he had some good words yeah but, no doubt no yeah, doubt he's, he's thought, got some kind of bad yeah he wasn't right with us but yeah very good um so then you hit uh you finally hit what did it feel like to hit the road it, it felt great <laughs> We had four miles to go, and it was just like, all right, 
it's just time to shuffle along and let's just get after it and get mm. it finished. And and then you uh, got to, you got to the train station. Was there any? Yep. Did did you guys know the route there? I think we had some. We had, we had a little bit of uh, pre warning about the route and on, on, on how to go. So mm-hmm. you know, we, we got to the train station. We we took the handicap ramp up to the up to the uh, elevator. We said, hey, let's take the elevator. It looks like a little easier route. So good. You know, also Basic told us you have to take the elevator. They told mm-hmm. us that. That's Basic. Don't lie. And he's a big dude. I wouldn't fuck with him, right? We don't want to be. We don't want to be DQ'd. We got all that way. We said we should, we need to, we need to do everything the, the right way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. I was told while I was training that it's a requirement as part of the race to take the elevator. Yep. Yeah, it, it is. And I mean, chip in the bib does not lie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you and you know what? You'll still get um. You'll you'll still get a finishing time, but it may have an asterisk if you if you go around it. Just yeah, we, we didn't want any asterisk. That was that's what we were saying the whole way. We just no no asterisk next to our name. We came this far. Yes. None of that. Even it, at Bluffhead, my girlfriend called me. Bless her, by the way. She said, <laughs> You're almost at the car. You're going the wrong way. And I said, No, nah, we have to go around this mile because it's a blue. <laughs> right on. So I'll tell you a little bit of trivia. The first year that was uh, that was the course. You had to shoot straight down the mountain. You had yes, to shoot down Bluff Head. That. And yeah. then oh, they, yeah. they did a reroute. So we yeah, always reroute. stay with whatever the blue trail officially is. Yeah. So if it changes, we change the course. So, But originally it was straight down that um, thing. And uh, one of our pacers, um, after running 40 miles with us, um, blew out his knee there and was out for six to eight months, I think. So... Yeah. Oh no. I think that's where um I think his name was Eric. He broke his ankle. And I think Simon and a bunch of people had to carry him out. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Maybe you you might be right on the ankle versus the um the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Simon um Simon ran. That was one of the earlier times that I ran with Simon. Only only ran with him a couple times before then. Uh, yeah. but yeah, he showed up like a fucking Viking on the trail, just yeah. like hair blazing and just like cooking towards us and then was like yup i'm here and it's like okay yep we're gonna finish <laughs> okay <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah he carried him down off the mountain so yeah. pretty cool stuff um so then tell us about the finish how did how did all that go um you know what what was that like well, well we, we were you know we had a conversation over the a long time and uh steve and i we were like well we're pretty much finishing on our own uh, you know together the whole time so um he's like what should we do i'm like uh, i don't know what we should do he's like let's hold our let's hold hands so, <laughs> so, I'm like, oh. so as we're we get to the finish i'm like let's go so we start sprinting across the uh the field and then we just plow through the water and then we get down the boardwalk and, and i think at that point i look over and he's he's dry heaving in, in in the uh in the reeds over there right right before the water i'm like where are you i said hold give me your hand let's hold hands and then he he dry heaves again. <laughs> well, yeah. well, to clarify, like I said that back at uh, Castle Craig at like nighttime, I was like yeah. kind of being humorous. Like when we finish, we should hold hands. Like it wasn't serious, but at the end it became like, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> and also, I, did, I never felt like puking the whole time, but after sprinting across that field and just the lack of nutrition, I just had to like yak, but couldn't because man, there was oh. nothing in there and I didn't eat for so long. I was like, Jeez. how could I even go? But if you asked me to go another mile or two, I probably could have. It's crazy. I don't know what happened. Oh my gosh. Well, that welcome to my world. Just, Sprinting across that field. One or two though, not four, you know, just <laughs> one or two. Very good. So, so that was awesome to see. Uh, so you guys finished in 36, ni- 36 hours, 19 minutes and seven seconds. I so, take it. Got um, that buckle. Good I job, rounded it. One was seven and one was eight. So I rounded it down to seven seconds. So that's fine. To, to even it up there. We'll take so, that. I could good. be Chris in a sprint, but we're all going to get together for our run soon. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Very Steve, good. Steve is Steve is, is quite the uh the hiker. So he, he can tell you all about it, but he, that, that guy power hike. He can get up, he can he can get down. I'm like, man, I can't even keep up with you when he when he's when he's really into it. Mm. I go to my like, how, how how do you hike so fast? I'm like, what what's going what's going on? I can't do that. 
Mm. But he's had some adventures. He should talk about it. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, using his pacers was awesome. And then I had my times where I paced as well. So I felt like, you know, it was a great trade off. Like I was using, uh, that was the moral of the story for me. I, I couldn't do it without everyone else. And I was also unsupported till mile 40 when my girlfriend came, but I was supported because other crews kept, you know, filling my bottle and, you know, some guy gave me uh mashed potatoes and I didn't even know who he was. So just really big help from everybody that just fed me you or, you know, there was a beer in there somewhere. I know you said no alcohol, but somebody just let me slug one. So <laughs> <laughs> hold it. So you, am I to take, am I to understand this right? You, you just fucking ate mashed potatoes from some dude you didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like on the side oh, of, I am a on the side bag, of the road. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like here, have these mashed potatoes. Okay. Yeah, there was bacon in them though. Oh, okay. was. <laughs> oh. Nice. oh. I'm going to have to try putting that in my mashed potatoes because I made a whole bunch like in the reusable baby food pouches. And then once I got on the trail, I wanted nothing to do with them. But I'm thinking maybe putting bacon in it might help. <laughs> I ate zero of anything I packed. It was terrible. My buddy's like, you, you didn't eat anything. I was like, I don't know. So, somebody just kept on feeding me cheeseburgers and French fries and, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, egg sandwiches. That's heaven. And that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, I, the, the pacers made it. I, I mean, the, the the aspect of having your own uh, your, your your own aid, it, that, that was really the fun of it because I was able to enlist two of my really good buddies. Um, I've been with them since, since college and, and they're always open for, uh, for stupid shit. And I was like, Hey guys, I'm doing this. Are you guys down? And they're like, Oh hell yeah. So they've never paced before. I mean, are you, you've met my buddy, Ed, he, that guy can talk to anybody. I think he talked to everybody. He, he's yep. like the mayor. This guy, this guy just flaps his gums all over the place. And then, <laughs> and then poor Chase, he's, he's the one that's really like getting ready. He's there fill my bottles up and, and, and filling Steve's bottles up and there's Ed just yapping away. But, but it was great. It was just like, we, I don't have the opportunity to get out and hang out with those guys. And I was able to spend a whole weekend with them. So, and then everybody else, the, the whole community is like, it was such a fun event. Like mm. I'd love to see it get somewhat bigger, but not too big because then it be then you kind of lose this community aspect, but it's such a fun race. I'm so glad I did it. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, that's, that's perfect. And I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you guys had a good time and, uh, you know, and you're right. It, it is a special, it's definitely a special time to, um, really, I mean, so many friendships have been born at, at that event. Um, actually, so, um, Amy Jennifer Hanlon, um, has run, uh, all the distances that we've had there. And she actually got engaged on the beach um, a couple of years back. Um, so uh, she ran again uh, this year, which was great. Um, this year, Lee Davis won the 50 miler uh, in a 10 one, um, which is, you know, which is, which is very cool. Uh, my buddy, Alex Brown uh, finished in 11, 11, uh, for second place, I run with Alex probably once or twice, a, sometimes twice a week. Um, so it's it's great to see that. And Emma Dixon um, uh, from Massachusetts, uh, she was uh, the first female there. So, um, you know, congratulations to her. Um, so it was, you know, it was nice uh, as far as the, um, let's see, we had 13 finishers in the uh, 50 mile. So, you know, congratulations to all them. Lots of different stories there. I mean, some people went into it with like, just some shit happening, you know, lots of difficulties happening in, you know, in life in general. Um, you know, and, and I'm not going to mention all names here, but there were some medical issues going on uh, prior and, um, you know, one, one guy had his, he was there, his wife was pregnant and he had a young child and he's like, you know, I talked to her and she said, yeah, he didn't have time to try to train for this because too much was going on. And I said, yeah, but it's kind of beautiful that he was able to go and still do something that he enjoys. And maybe he didn't run it as fast as he did, but it sounds like he's got his priorities straight because he has his shit together at home 
and um, still got out to do something that was difficult. You know, it's kind of like throwing an extra rock in your pack, right? And, uh, you know, and, and, and finishing. So he did that. Had another guy who was injured ahead of time and decided to drop down. And he just kind of went on chill pace and just had a good time. Uh, other people just like had just like, you know, all the fucking glorious shit that happens on the trails that, you know, like you think your food is here or your drink is there and it's not. And you think you have flashlight and it's not. And you think you have enough warm clothes and it's not. And it's like, you know, all the things go wrong at once. And somehow they got to the finish line. So um, it was it was great to see all that, um, you know, and just. Uh, I don't know. It's, I, I can't say enough about, um, you know, the community here and, uh, and, and what the weekend's like. So uh, let me, let me say one thing. Cause I, I forgot. I, I don't want to go with this unmentioned. So one my pacer through the night who really helped Steve and I, her name is Julie Frazier. And I believe she's in the trail mixers and uh, funny story. I wasn't really friends with her. So me and my mm -hmm. wife, we're sitting, uh, we're out for dinner one night and, and she knows her. And I'm like, I need some pacers. Cause my, my brother-in-law wasn't around early on in the race. And she's like, Hey, how about Julie Frazier? I'm like, she's never met me. She's not gonna, she's not gonna run with me. So she pops her, her phone open and sends her a text. And, uh, Julie's like, I'll run with them. Yeah. That's an honor. This that, and the other thing. I love running. And she's never met me. I just never met my friends. She's, she just came out, paced with us. Brought, brought us through the night, 15 miles, brought us to, sun, uh, to sunrise at uh, Gia Frida. And uh, I, I think, you know, without her, I don't know if I would have finished the race. I just needed somebody to kind of just walk us through so I could turn my brain off and I could save that energy. Cause I was, I was deep in the pain cave at that point. I had some nutritional issues that I was working through that I didn't come out until later on in the afternoon on, on, on that uh, Saturday. So she's definitely a big help. Very good. Yeah, that's excellent. That's, that's really cool. That's, um, it is, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's always fun to pace people too, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I always enjoy that, enjoy that part. And, you know, cause you kind of get, I don't know, you, you get a taste of it without all the pain, right? You get a taste of the butt. <laughs> that's for sure. You get a taste of the butt without all the <laughs> <laughs> stuff, right? and some of those guys got a lot of big miles in too a lot of those guys got big miles so yeah. i'm happy for them no yeah no they get doubt. to do, try something new and, and put some big miles on and and, and get their time in. and and yeah. save the day yeah a lot of those guys save the day and uh meg ryan too they showed up and they hiked the at this year or last year and uh they, they knew what trail magic was all about. So, you know, that word rings a bell to every hiker or uh, mm. ultra runner. Anybody knows what trail magic. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. So um, yeah, even Jacques Serbach. So he, sir, yeah, he has, he had the previous course record from last year and he went and paced uh, Justin for a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to see him kind of um, helping others succeed. In, we in met him this. at one point too. Yeah, he he definitely helped us at one point. Oh, good, good. Yeah, he came he's, flying by. He was he was giving us some direction and and whatnot. So, yeah, he's such a wealth of knowledge. He's such a beautiful human. He's yeah, going to be yeah. missed so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Gigi will also be missed. Yes. And Tobias, Tobias told me about uh, calories per hour and what I should be taking. So that was a huge like insight as to exactly how many calories i'm reading packages and now there's a whole new element i always pick up something with every race that i do or and three new hikes of course Pretty good yeah el nino he's the chosen one so um, he knows he knows he's the chosen one he yeah. does he's the child prodigy he's like the last airbender but for <laughs> trails he's the last dirt bender <laughs> so gosh well um, guys, I think maybe, um, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that, um, uh, that we're missing and that we're not talking about, but, um, uh, oh, congratulations to Jimmy Mack who just got, uh, he got the assist over at the, uh, last human standing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was Liz Allen's race. We'll probably, uh, hopefully get a chance to talk about that. Um, you know, hopefully next week, you yeah. know. 
Um, is that the one at Ragged Mountain? Uh, it's yeah. the, the one in, um, it's in Rhode Island. In Rhode oh, Island. it's another one. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that um, you're right though. That just happened. Um, and um, Sarah Connor. One. Sarah Connor. Sarah yeah, okay. Connor. <laughs> I'll um, yeah, that done, she was so. amazing out there for yeah. uh, that's, Rhode Island. That's what I hear. I mean, you're fucking up against the Terminator. Is that even fair? <laughs> I don't think so. Or she's actually a Terminator killer, right? The yeah. you know, Connor was, was a Terminator, Terminator slayer. So yeah, she's yeah. so strong. Yep. Yeah. There's something to that lat based challenge, though. It's like you're putting your foot. Now we talked about this during. Uh, uh, this was my first point to point hundred miler, mm-hmm. but running in a circle is something different because you can put your foot down in that spot that you did last time, and you start to learn that loop. So. Uh, that that is such an interesting concept and in a mm. race that everybody's been putting on. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. That is a um, you, you start to look at everything the same. Everything's this, you know, you see it over and over again, um, but it's different each time. So I think those loops are like more of a mental challenge because you're like, man, I just go right back to the start and the end, and I I just want to be done with this. Like mm. at least point to point, you just you got to go to the next to the point. But then the circle ones are just, they just mess with your head. Yeah. Cause otherwise it's a point to nothing. I love the circle races. Fre- Fred's a circle really? head. So yeah. <laughs> I've run a few. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I love them. Oh, yeah. it seems so tedious. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, there's uh, the Centurion uh, Ultra, I think it's coming up. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Guilford. Yeah, Blues Race. Yeah, nice. that's that a really good race. Yeah. yeah, Roosevelt Forest. He does some good races. In in that forest, that uh, forgotten evil. It's, <laughs> oh, it's it's forgotten forest. forest, Centurion. There's a storybook half there. Um, I forgot what else he does. Yeah. Forbidden. Um, so. So let me ask you guys, any last, um, any closing arguments, as we say, um, before we, uh, it, before we wrap things up tonight, anything it's else? It's world, um, world running day or world yeah. today is. Yeah. Uh, I knew I forgot something today. Uh, <laughs> world limping day. I forgot to run today. Yeah. I, I, I did too. <laughs> I mowed my lawn and took a walk though. Oh, that's oh. pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Right? Good yeah. enough. These days. I, I, I didn't do anything. I sat on my ass and worked and I ate a lot of snacks. <laughs> Okay. That's good. And so like, I want to say this to people who are listening, who uh, may have run the cut or may have run another big race lately. Um, Sometimes we come off of these things and we're just high as a kite. Right. And you fucking feel so great. And after you do that, you're like, nothing will ever bother me in the world again. Not true. <laughs> yeah. And and then like sometimes then like Thursday happens. <laughs> and and things can feel a little bit down. So I just if nobody's told you yet today, you're still fucking awesome. Okay. You're just yeah. as awesome today as you were like Monday morning. So um you know so so I'll there's be that. so sad when this is over. That's oh right. My gosh, it's yes. so true. It's oh so God. true. Yes. When my we're training the training things that we did after we finished the last one, it hit me like, oh my gosh, this training block is almost over. And I got really sad. Like to me, mm. it was like, oh my gosh. That well, was having so much fun. Now everybody has tattoos that they can wear to remind them in their next race. Uh there's all in the in the bag. You may not have seen the initial bag, but that had um, you know, some tattoos in there. Uh, that I'll be so sad when this is over. So I got a tattoo yesterday. I saw of that. course you did. <laughs> I, I figured probably yeah. statistically. There was you a got chance. the names, of, you got the Chinese names of your children. Yeah, I got my children's, yes. their Chinese birth names that they were given by their That's grandmother. Right. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Well, um, I, I just want to say one more time, thanks again to everybody uh, who ran or who showed up or who donated, um, you know, to the Cut 112. Um, and we also, so we raised um, about $5,000 awesome. for Connecticut Forest and Parks through the event. So, nice. um, you know, that's, uh, that's just awesome. And, um, you know, I look forward to the next uh, thing that we can do to help support them. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, thank you guys all for, uh, you know, first of all, for taking part in, you know, the race and, um, uh, and for joining us tonight. So um, I just want to say that to all of our listeners out there, if you've made it this far, of course, uh, seek professional help. And we'll see you all in a mile. Mile and a half. All right. All right, so it is time to ask the magic eight ball a question. It's basically, remember, this is as good as any chat GPT. I think we're going to have a special, maybe next week we're going to do that. We're going to have a showdown between chat and the magic eight ball, because I think (laughs) the magic eight ball is superior in so many ways. So um, does anybody have a question for the uh, magic eight ball? Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's how, hear how soon should we book our next hundred miler? I already yes, did. I, it's it's <laughs> got to be. That's a great question, but it's got to be a yes or no. Oh. Are you oh. going to do another hundred miler? Did you have already booked your next hundred miler? Yes, oh, I did. I did. <laughs> okay, so has Fred already booked his next hundred miler? I feel like that's and an the answer, answer is cannot predict now. okay (laughs) all right so you know what that's it just kind of knows so oh and i did ask like you have to think the magic eight ball is fucking amazing because like here's some of the answers that it knew it knew um i said we had Corey waltering on the show and um he was going to run the cruel jewel with uh bessick so i said is bessick going to beat you in the cruel jewel and like the obvious answer is, I mean, probably not. It's like Corey Waltering, right? Like he's like a fucking stud. I mean, not that Bessick's not. Okay, I'm not saying that. Oh, talking shit about Bessick. But it said <laughs> it said that Bessick's gonna. It basically predicted Bessick as the winner, and sure enough, Corey, you know, Corey like had an ankle issue and dropped out, so Bessick won. Oh, so, nice. Magic Eight Ball, better than AI. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth.